Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. At the end of my Was It Any Good Though series, I came to a conclusion, a conclusion that I suspected would be the case, but wouldn't have truly known until I'd looked at each class in the level of detail that I did. And that is that every class can be considered good, and while some are more favoured, there is really no class that is just straight up bad or useless. Each class has their own unique identity and iconic spells. Not everyone needs to have a CC, not everyone needs to have an interrupt or even a DPS cooldown, and while some classes can do things others cannot, it's often also the case vice versa. So in this new series, I want to look at the ways you can make the most out of your chosen class and find out how to play to your class's strengths. The points I'll be looking at will differ from class to class in relation to their strengths as they aren't all shared across the board. Today I'll be looking at the priest and we'll cover these points. Healing, unique utility, shadow pvp, racials and some spell interactions, and then some macros and add-ons. So it looks like the priest just about edged out the last vote, which was a close one between this and the paladin, but here we are bringing the light and the shadow today. Priests are best associated with their healing capabilities, but locking them into that one role is a big mistake as they're good for many other things. So let's do this and see what makes the priest strong. And I bet I know what you're thinking. To play to the priest's strengths, heal. Congratulations. And, well, to be honest, you aren't wrong. I think it's pretty common knowledge at this point that priests fulfill the healing role very well. But then again, if I say priests are good healers, it doesn't actually tell you why. I'm a details kind of person. I like knowing about the why bit, so let's take a look at that, shall we? Priests simply have more options than other healing classes do. You'll notice that spellcasting time goes up with the first few ranks you level up, usually capping out quite fast, and abilities more or less always follow the rule that the longer the cast, the more expensive and more powerful the spell. Most healing classes follow this rule too. You have a fast and less efficient heal, like lesser healing wave or flash heal, and then a long and more efficient heal, like healing wave and greater heal. The power that the priest brings is the stuff in between the two options that other healers can't really match. They have power word shield as an emergency button, renew for heals on the move, heal as an efficient mix between casting speed and healing power, prayer of healing if your whole party's under fire, lesser heal I can give a quick mention but it's not really used past the early levels. Down ranking and pre-casting big heals and letting your bonus spell healing kick in make you highly efficient as with any healing class and Efficiency is one of those things that matters a great deal as fights go on longer and longer. You may have seen or even experienced for yourself, but the fights in Molten Core, you can pretty much throw efficiency out of the window and go all out pumping the tank with big heals as much as possible during risky Zerg strats. Even then, you're giving a solid armor buff through inspiration on your crits. Other talents specific to the priests are spiritual guidance, giving you an excellent double dip from spirit, which already aids your mana regen and now can directly aid your heals too. For the time being though, many priests looking at raiding are opting into a discipline build and foregoing the extra healing capabilities of holy because, well, it's just not really needed at the moment. Maybe things will change in Blackwing Lur? We'll have to see. This specialization does have some theoretical damage through talents like Force of Will, Holy Specialization and Divine Fury is a decent hybrid for raiding and farming in the open world. Doesn't compare to Shadow though. The big draw of this spec is really power infusion. Pop this on a geared and buffed up mage and they will crush the bosses. The healing portion isn't really used to be honest. This spell is mainly just used like a DPS cooldown. Makes mages even better than they already are as well. What's not to like? Okay, so hopefully that cleared up a little bit more why priests are such monster healers. What else can they do? Well, they have some pretty awesome personal utility options. Every class does to some extent for sure, but what priests get is that little bit more exciting than most. Well, it looks like priests are the big brain class as they have so many abilities focused on the minds of their enemies. Mind Soothe can get you some skips in certain areas by reducing enemy aggro radius by a large amount. Though some people just sort of forget it exists and just pull what they're used to doing, so it can be hard to communicate that you're doing it. Mind Vision on a flag carrying wars on Gulch is basically cheating as to finding out what direction they'll be going if you're unsure. Great for pre-made usage to keep checks on your enemies, since it'll pretty much always be a druid holding the flag or nearby the flag, it can give you that advanced information on where to set up. Mind Control is another great multi-use tool. If you're facing some tough mobs by yourself when leveling, you can Mind Control one and have the others take them out and then reset by running away a bit. Of course, throwing people into lava 
off cliffs, or to their general inconvenience, is a classic move for the priests. Certain enemies also have extremely powerful buffs that can be used on your party members. In early Molten Core, people would actually exit the raid and go to Lower Black Rock Spire to mind control a Scar Shield Spellbinder for the huge plus 83 fire resist buff they have. You don't need to farm fire resistance gear with this easy to get buff basically. Other interesting buffs include Fury of Ragnaros from the Twilight Emissaries and Black Rock Depths. Scarlet Medic in the Western Plaguelands had a plus 83 arcane resist buff. These runs are a bit more difficult to get or just not as useful. Still, it's fun to think about from a min max point of view. You can check out the Was It Any Good though video for priests and all their racials and details, but I just want to give them a quick mention here as they are such a cool and unique aspect to the class. I kind of wish they did this thing for more of a classes too where it made sense. Certain priests racial abilities are extremely impactful, like Fear Ward for Dwarves being super useful in any scary scenario, and Shadow Guard for Trolls being nuts in PvP. Anyone who hits them gets spell knockback and a 10% chance to be stunned as long as the priest has the blackout talent. Each racial has its time and place where they're best for sure, it's just that certain ones are more relevant more often than others. Just consider the usage for something like Grace of the Loon versus Desperate Prayer. But at the end of the day, this is what Classic's all about, spells that are meant to fit their class rather than trying to go for perfect balance. Finally, I just wanted to do a quick note on Power Word Shield interactions with Rage. No doubt many cases priests will be healing. Think of Power Word Shield more as your emergency button, not your use on cooldown button. Say you're in a dungeon and your bear or warrior charges in and you shield them. They won't gain any rage from taking damage as well. Your shield's absorbing at all, so it will directly impact their threat generation and can lead to DPS or even you as the healer pulling aggro. Don't shield on pull. Once your tanks have some time to generate threat, sure, you can do it, but generally other spells are better to use as they're more mana efficient. Unless of course you have a paladin tank, in which case, shield away. Time to highlight our priestly friends in PvP. Now, priests are solid healers in PvP, no doubt about that, but here I want to look at Shadow, as I think people really overlook how absolutely monstrous this spec is in the right hands. This is also mainly for 1v1 scenarios, though. Priests can do well in 1v2s if you have some gear to endure a beating. First things first, the priest PvP trinket removes polymorph, fear and stun effects. You couldn't really ask for better to be honest, many of the most dangerous effects in the game are listed under these categories, so that's a good start, especially for an extremely immobile class. Shadow Priests win through their heavy damage over time effects in Shadow Word Pain, and I guess you could say Mind Flay. Undead get Devouring Plague too, which is great unless your opponent has a Dispel, as it does cost a huge amount of mana. This combined with your Shields, CC, Vampiric Embrace, giving solid self-healing, they're fantastic duelists and have few weak matchups. As with any mana user however, that blue bar can be your real limiting factor, along with your complete lack of anything regarding mobility. So let's look at some of the matchups. As for Warrior, this one shouldn't really be too difficult. The rage generation will be cut heavily as they swing into your shield. Your fear is basically a non-factor due to Berserker Rage or possibly Death Wish. This should be a short fight either way. Paladins are another free pass really, they just don't have the damage to take you down through Vampiric Embrace and Shields. The lack of interrupt and the hammer of justice being trinketable pops this one off as super one-sided. Don't forget to dispel their buffs either. Versus Druid, the matchup is same story really for Feral or Balance, and you can dispel all their magical damage over time effects just as fast as they apply them, and you just do more damage yourself as well. You can spam dispel magic on them, it will insta-clear any nature's swiftness or innovate if you think they're going to cast it. You can even win in a long fight too, Vampiric Embrace is just very efficient healing. Rogues could be one of the harder matchups, assuming they get the opener. Getting Shadow Word Pain up running as soon as possible is super important. It keeps damage rolling during stuns and hopefully stops bandaging as well as a bit of healing from Vampiric Embrace. Blind is a guaranteed reset for the rogue unless you have items to damage over time yourself. Make sure you keep inner fires up and keep in mind the reduced physical damage from being in shadow form. If you are interrupted on shadow you can leave it to heal up a bit if you have the mana for it. You will pretty much only be able to do this once though so pray the rogue doesn't get too many crits. If they have preparation up it's going to be a tough fight to win. Keeping Shadow Word Pain Rolling is the most important thing. It will do most of your damage throughout the fight. Finally, the matchup is considerably easier for Undead thanks to Touch of Weakness and Devouring Plague. For Shamans, it could be one of the harder matchups as well due to their Tremor Toting needing attention and then being able to purge your beneficial effects like Shield in a Fire or Power Word Fortitude and Grounding Totem when you cast a Mind Blast. The key to winning this is to land them in a Fear. Without Tremor Totem, they have no way out of it. Earthshock's also a bit of a nightmare versus your casted 
or channel damage too. If you land a few spells however it can go your way but it sort of needs an unforced error from the shaman really. Against a hunter they're going to try and abuse their range to make life difficult. You will likely only be able to hit them with Mind Blast and Shadow Word Pain since Mind Play has such a short range whilst their Viper Sting drains your mana. Keep Shadow Word Pain and Vampiric Embrace upon the pet as well as the hunter as it's free healing for you if you can't get in range to Mind Flay the hunter. Once you do get close, expect a scattered trap before you can fear. It can be one of the harder matchups as well, but it is certainly winnable. In a priest mirror, it comes down to mana efficiency, since you can both trinket fears, neither have the tools to run away, it is a bit of a standoff between two damage turrets. Mana burn if specced into it can be pretty solid. Save your power word shield for when a mind blast is casted, or it will simply be dispelled. Treat your fear like an interrupt rather than relying on it, and keep the dots dispelled off yourself. Final two matchups now, first the Warlock, this can be another tough one, especially if they have Soul Link spec. Make sure you dispel Shadow Ward when they use it. If they sacrifice their Voidwalker, you can dispel the Sacrifice buff they've got. You can trinket their first fear, but the second fear, especially after Death Coil, is gonna stick. A big issue is when you go for a Silence on the Warlock, their Fell Hunter is still there to spell lock you. Once again, keep dots rolling on both targets so you can get some heals on, and you should keep some trash debuffs rolling on yourself like Noggin Fogger, the lower the chance their devour magic hits your shield, it's one of the harder matchups again. Finally, Mages, actually not a bad matchup, the only issue is them resetting on you, sort of like with everyone else. Once again, spam that Dispel Magic to strip their Damper Magic and Ice Barrier buffs, keep your shield up and dispel yourself when Frost Nova hits to stop Shatter combos. The win condition for the Mage is running through your mana bar whilst resetting with Polymorph. If you can stay in range, this one shouldn't be too hard. Let's have a quick look at some macros, there's not too many priest specific macros to talk about. Mouse Overs are particularly useful for spells like Dispel Magic that can either hit friendly or enemy targets or spells that need a quick reaction time like silence you can create a macro to avoid accidentally leaving shadow form this will basically only cast the spell but not cancel it if it's already active you could have the regular shadow form and an alternate key too so it's easy to remember how to get out of it and as for add-ons, if your class has damage over time effects, I can always recommend Classic Aura Durations. It simply shows your damage over time effects a lot more clearly on the enemy frame and gives you a better idea of when they will expire. I get Omni CC to go with this. This shows CC effects on character portraits. You can track them much better. This is especially useful for seeing at a glance how long's left on your important CC abilities like Silence, Psychic Scream or Shackle Undead. Priests are one of those classes we are likely to have more than one gear set, so an add-on to manage your wardrobe can be very useful. I give Item Rack a look for this. It's really easy to use and set up, and you can swap between sets from the default UI, and even set events or things that need to happen for the gear swap to occur. And it does have a default setting to equip certain items for when you enter shadow form as well. And that is it for the Priest. The Priest just has so many good things going for them. As always, I hope you enjoyed. Tell me what you want next below. We have Paladin, Warrior, Hunter, Rogue, Warlock and Mage left and I will see you in the next one. If you like what you see, give the video a like and subscribe as there's plenty more to come. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Bye.